Shalom, and welcome to our history podcast. This is a production of KingdomPreppers.org. I'm your host, Kingdom Prepper, and you're listening to Churchianity, 2,000 Years of Leaven. We continue with our history. Part 10, The Monastic Movement. Major shifts continued to take place within the Christian church as each new era dawned. When persecution erupted during the reigns of certain emperors, Christians braved torture and torment for the sake of their religion, and many, through gross misinterpretations of scripture, even saw death by martyrdom as a way to attain perfection and instant access to heaven. When persecution ceased, This created a problem for those who truly believed that martyrdom was a means to achieving sainthood. What is more, Christian theology was being bent and manipulated by the church leaders to accommodate new developments. Prior to Constantine, early Christians saw the good news books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, as good news directed to the poor, almost exclusively. The rich, according to those very books, would find difficulty in both receiving the same news as well as altering their lives and readying their hearts to meet the requirements for salvation. Yet, when Constantine took the throne and showered favor upon the church, great riches, extravagance, and pomp became a mark of Yah's blessings. The rich were now seen as those worthy of salvation. That theological slant continues to be pushed to this day through the various prosperity megachurches that have sprung up across the American landscape, showing that the Constantinian era has not ended. Those who saw Yeshua's message as one directed at the poor and oppressed, the lowly and meek, rejected the direction in which the church leaders were steering their salvation theology, and yet another radical new shift developed, monasticism, a movement that arose partly in protest against the established order, The establishment greeted Constantine's sweeping changes in favor as a fulfillment of Yah's promises to Israel, in whose place they believed they now stood. The narrow gate to salvation now became a broad way so expansive and accommodating that vast multitudes now rushed into the church to partake of Christian privileges and rise to esteemed positions without undergoing any spiritual changes. Bishops competed for prestigious positions, where one would pull rank over others, and the wealthy rose to power, heavily influencing or outright dominating church life for the masses. In other words, one could hardly see the wheat for all the tears that flourished. When persecution was still an inevitability for Christians, they were on guard against the Roman authorities, who could snatch them away at any moment to undergo a series of trials that would determine their fate whether they would face death as martyrs or live as disgraced apostates. This epic choice was taken away periodically during the peaceful times that came in the 2nd and 3rd centuries, and that peace caused many Christians to grow weak when persecutions flared once more. This led to the problem of the lapsed, as well as the Donatist controversy, which we covered in the 5th and 8th episodes of this podcast series, respectively. Many among the laity saw that the security of peaceful times and the comfort derived from Christian favor bestowed by the state were dangerous elements for sincere believers. When persecutions were determined to be a thing of the past and the peace and safety of the church was assured during the reigns of Christian emperors, when church leaders were luxuriating in lavish homes and the rich and powerful were being drawn to the Christian movement, which had become a broad avenue for the masses, Many sought a different path, the extreme ascetic life of monasticism. Of course, with spiritual leaven, things will always get pushed to the extreme, and in this case, we have two that sit at opposite ends, the riches, excesses, and pomp of the church leadership, and the radical monastic movement among the laity. And I say the laity because the whole monastic movement, and later on that of the friars, was a lay one writes Chris Wickham in his book Medieval Europe. Ordained clergy were usually a minority in monasteries, and, since they had to be male, did not exist at all in nunneries. Men and women in those cases autonomously chose an often extreme version of Christian practice, although this was usually legitimated by equally extreme forms of obedience to abbots, abbesses, 
and, through them, to the wider order of the church. Monasticism was a way for devoted Christians to flee the trappings of society and leave behind social traditions that tended to dominate the mind and body alike, to exercise control over their many passions and resist temptations of every sort, a certain degree of isolation seemed necessary. So, while thousands of new converts flocked to the church to be baptized, thousands more were leaving to worship in solitude. In his book, The Civilization of the Middle Ages, author Norman F. Cantor gives us a good description of what medieval Christian monasticism truly embodied. Monasticism is a form of religious asceticism, which in turn involves the disciplining, limitation, or abnegation of the material and physical aspects of human life to assure a saving relationship with a deity conceived of as a purely spiritual being. Asceticism is therefore intended to secure salvation, and this end can be achieved either by the withdrawal of the ascetic from society and its corrupting temptations and distractions, or by the severe control of social life to make the environment suitable for the ascetic to continue to live in the world. The former manifestation of asceticism is called monasticism, and the latter may be termed... To listen to the full audio of this podcast, or to download a free MP3 version, visit our website, kingdompreppers.org, by clicking the link in the description, and journey with us on this important historic odyssey.